Welcome back, Guardians. Very quick warning. Do not go into the comments. People are straight up posting data mind spoilers in the comments. It has already been spoiled for me, I think. If you want to support the channel, just drop a like and get out. Alternatively, if you want to predict or have the season spoiled for you, sure, jump right into the comments. But this video will not spoil anything. I am just going to share with you the big piece of lore that was dropped in game today. This video is also going to double as the week three story recap for season of the plunder. If you need to catch up on the story for season of the plunder, check out the playlist. Let's get into it. Before I get to the juicy lore, let me run you through what happened first this week. Mithrax makes contact through the helm and requests that we continue to track down the relics and stop Aramis. He once again enters protective father mode and requests that Guardians do not involve his daughter Ido in their missions. Mithrax acknowledges that he has made mistakes in the past, which he should have told Ido about, but he doesn't give any specific examples. While we know that Mithrax has killed the Guardians previously, it definitely feels like Mithrax's dark past is related to something else. In order to progress the story this week, we run through the usual seasonal activities, and at the end of the expedition mission, Spider says this. Mithrax hasn't told you any more about these relics, has he? I suppose it's need to know. And Mithrax knows. Spider, why are you using a secure channel? Did my father tell you to do so? Huh? Clever scribe. No more flattery? Well, Mithrax asked me to keep you at arm's length. Perhaps he doesn't want you mixing in with our unsavory business. Were those his exact words? Only a guess. Who can say? And after all, who am I to question the cow? Hm. Spider? I will find out what's going on here. This makes me think that Mithrax's dark past is not just related to fighting humanity, but more related to these dark relics, and that Mithrax knows more about them than he is letting on. Otto becomes annoyed by being blockaded by her father and wants to discover the truth about her father's past, so she visits the spider and demands answers. Spider and Mithrax have a long history together. Although we don't quite know the details, it is implied in the new lore that Mithrax exiled or was at least responsible for Spider ending up in the reef. In many of the interactions between Mithrax and Spider this season, you will see Mithrax pull rank over Spider. And I think this is not just because Mithrax is a cow right now, but rather it also hints at their previous relationship. Before Spider provides any information to Ido, Mithrax interrupts the conversation and threatens to cut out Spider's tongue. Spider teases Mithrax that Ido will eventually learn the truth and also says he's not the only one who remembers. At this stage, we know that Eremis also knows the truth about Mithrax. Okay, now you're ready for the big law this week. Have a listen to the radio message from the Drifter. I kept this part quiet. I think half of those pirate lords didn't know what they had to begin with. They knew these things were powerful, but not why. Crack one open and you'd find a finger bone or a knot of old hair. Strong stuff. Smells awful. Ask me how I know. I've been holding on to them, but I figured you might want them. Hmm. Why? I thought to myself, you know who might like something strange and unsettling? Eris Morn. A gift, then? Well, yeah, Moondust. You could call it a gift. The sentiment is appreciated. But no. You know what you possess. These relics are not simple curiosities to be hoarded. They might serve a greater purpose. Then what's that? Am I your conscience? Discover this for yourself. They are reliquaries, objects of great power. The darkness moves just beneath its skin. Do you feel it? It ruptures, flows, envelops. Ooh, I like listening to you talk. And I enjoy your silence. So inside the relics, 
are body parts. The relics we know from last week radiate darkness energy, and now we know that they have body parts in them that we assume are radiating the darkness energy. We also know that the witness is getting Eremus to collect these relics, to collect these body parts. The relic law after you plant the relic in the helm also confirms that the relic contains body parts. Have a listen. I've been trying to determine what exactly is inside these reliquaries, but I dare not open them. The resulting surge of darkness energies would have unforeseeable effects on my physiology. However, I did manage to secure a centuries-old Vanguard mission report from the Cryptarchy. The reporting Guardian said that Elixni crews were infighting over what he called, quote, chunks of rotting meat. The report is of dubious quality, but it did make me wonder if the relic could be biological in nature. And that is where I'm going to leave this. I can't in good faith predict this storyline because I already know where this is going because it's been spoiled for me. This is the exact reason why I do not read spoilers. I do not look at data mined information and I only look at information in the game, but I cannot predict it for you right now because I think I know where it's going. You get the point. Hopefully you can put it together yourself. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel, you cannot think of a comment don't leave a comment like the video and get out all right bye bye peace